Hey guys, it's Nathan and in today's video we're gonna have a look at how Strangers by Kenya Grace was made. And it goes like this We'll get in your car and you'll need to kiss me We'll talk for hours and night on the bikes And we're gonna start off with the sounds in the intro We got this pad, this plug and some vocal effects here. And this pad here is surprisingly simple. It's basically just a super saw which sounds like this. But instead of a regular saw wave I used a rounded saw wave which is a little bit more smooth. And then we're adding in a filter and then most of the sound is pretty much already there. I put some FX in here to polish it a little bit more. Now this patch isn't very complex, but what makes the chord sound so good is the actual chord themselves. So if we listen to these chords in solo, we got a regular chord in the beginning, but then we got a D major 7th. You can hear that little note on top, which makes it kind of interesting. And then there's a G major 7 ninth here. And lastly an E minor. So it's not just a regular four chord progression, it's actually with little notes sprinkled in here and then. And that gives it this almost mystic vibe. Next we're coming to the synth plug here. For this one I'm using Serum again. What's interesting about this plug is if I pull back the attack, it's just a regular, really processed saw plug. But if I set the attack to about 41 milliseconds, it's controlling also the filter and you get that squeaky sound, which makes it sound so unique. I believe in the original, it was done with just one sound, but I did it with two sounds. I have another sound that is well for the more sustained sound. And that sounds like this. And both patches here have a filter that is controlling the cutoff and it's opening up slowly throughout the intro and it's also used later in the song. And then at the end where the long note is played, there's a pitch band going down by two semitones and that's gonna sound like this then. The intro already sounds pretty nice, but there's two more sounds coming in. We have these stutter vocals here and a little bit of noise. It's panned left and right. And for the stutter vocals, this is simply a splice vocal. There's just simply one note and I pitch it to the correct key. And then I'm using this really popular stutter vocal effect here, which is 1 16th and the shape looks like this. And then we also have a little bit of panning using shaper box here. And that's gonna sound like this. We also got a filter on top that pushed it a little bit more in the background, some delay on top and reverb and eventually it sounds like this. For the noise I'm using the Shaperbox noise module and I'm also have an LFO on the volume and the panning. And finally we got this super smooth uh, down sweep from Hot Stuff. And next we're coming to the drums in the verse and this one is a liquid drum and bass song which is basically a more relaxed version of drum and bass. It's a lot more smooth and a lot less aggressive. The kick and snare pattern is actually pretty simple. You just use a four on the floor kick and then you push that forward a little bit and then you get the drum and bass groove. The kick I'm using here is a short version of the main kick I used in the drop. I made this one with serum and we're coming back to this in a second but it sounds like this. And then we have a classic liquid drum and bass snare, which is basically a mix of a rim shot and a more metallic sounding snare. They're always really light, they don't have too much low end and it sounds like this. And you can hear it's also filtered down a little bit so it's not really in your face. And then we simply just got a 16 note hi-hat which is a one shot sample and a loop from Splice that I chopped up to change the last part here and together it sounds like this. And before we come to the other elements in the drop, I want to show you the drums in the drop first because there's a really interesting technique that was used here. So as I mentioned before, the kick drum in the verse is the same as the kick drum in the chorus, it's just shortened a lot. So I made this one with serum and it sounds like this. And it's a really smooth kick drum here. And if you listen to the other one here, you can hear that it's a lot more filtered down and this was used on the entire drums in the verse. And to do this, I'm using a plugin from Air Music Tech. It's called Flavor Pro. It's very similar to Aussie Retro Color, but I like it a lot more because it has really nice colors in here. And if you listen to the hi-hats here, they actually sound like this. 
But with the Air Flavor Pro activated, it sounds like this. On the snare, we have three more layers. And you can hear they have a really sharp and open sound. And that basically opens up the drums a lot more. So if you listen to the drums in the verse here. And now on the chorus. So basically the kick is getting heavier and the drums open up more, get more high end. And this way the chorus is just a lot more explosive and you know that's the part where everything is going on. It's a super cool technique. Next we're coming to the bass, which is also surprisingly simple. It's simply a saw wave. We're using nine voices of unison here. And it's basically just a filter, another filter, and a little bit of chorus. And you can already hear the sound is gliding a little bit and that's because the glide is turned on here. It's set to always, legato and mono mode. I have the notes overlapping and this way they smoothly glide over each other. And if we put that in the drop, it sounds like this. It's just amazing how smooth this entire song sounds. I usually don't listen to liquid drum and bass and I'm pretty sure a lot of people who like this song don't listen to liquid drum and bass either. And I believe this is one of the key factors why this song is so popular right now. It is a lot more smooth, it's a lot more radio friendly in a way. Everything is so chilled, plus it has a really catchy top line and that sets it apart from a lot of other liquid drum and bass songs. And finally, we're coming to the background vocal chops in the track. I believe she made those with her own vocals because there's, as you can see, some pitch gliding here, which usually happens when you just sing multiple notes and you glide from one to the other one. Uh, but I simply used a splice vocal here, and this is just a one shot, which originally sounded like this. And I shortened it, I pitched it, and I changed the formant to match the tone. And then I'm adding a little bit of pitch bend by two semitones. This is without the pitch bend, and this is with so it's slightly going up. And what's really funny is the last uh, vocal chop, it didn't really sound like the other ones and it kind of sounded like a cat. So I went on Splice and searched for a cat sample. And I took this one here, run it through Auto-Tune and I manipulated it a little bit more. It eventually sounded like this then. And for this one, I'm using Seal A vocals, uh, going into Valhalla Supermassive, then going into Valhalla Vintage Verb and then filtering that down with a filter and an EQ, finally putting some OTT on top, and all together with the cat sample, it sounds like this. And that's pretty much it for the entire track. I have one more really cool trick I want to show you here, because there's a symbol that is transitioning into the drop. And you can hear we have a really smooth transition. You're gonna use Serum FX and you're gonna pick one of those comb filters. The comb filters have these really strong resonance peaks, which is basically synthesizing a cymbal and you have to put the resonance here all the way up to like 90 or a little bit more. Now if I play that back with just the comb filter, you're gonna hear that it's already longer. So this is without and this is with. So it's pretty impressive how it actually just makes the symbol longer and you can also use that to make crashes longer. Then on top of it, I'm using the Tal reverb, which is a reverb that sounds similar to a symbol and then a little bit of EQ and then you get a super nice symbol transition. And that's already it for this remake. If you want to have all the sounds, the project files and everything, there's a link in the description where you can join our monthly membership program called The Secret Producer Club. And we currently even have a special offer where you can join for one euro for your first month. You get presets, you get stems, and you get the project file and you can check it out yourself. And now let's check out the final result. <laughs> no, I actually just noticed I forgot a quite important thing, which is the sidechain. On the pad and on the bass, we have a pretty heavy sidechain here. This is the main kick and I'm routing this to the pad and the reese bass channel. On these channels, I'm using Fruity Limiter. And then if you play that back, every time the kick hits, the bass gets stuck down really heavily. And I use the same settings on the pad as well, just with a little lower threshold, so it's not compressing that much. And that really makes space for the kick to come through. Now let's check out the final result. Every time I meet somebody new It's like they 
Shop